Hey Vira City, welcome back to the channel. It's a girl Vramo and I'm back with another reaction video. Today guys, I'm going to be reacting to another video and this is Africa is not poor because of colonization. Wow. Okay, I'm African and this looks pretty interesting. I would love to get into this with you guys. But before we get started, we have some amazing people watching us for the first time. If you are new here, hello, I'm Vera. I do reaction videos. We have two different artists on here. We have two different songs from all over the world. If this is something that I love, why not join Vera City? Hit the subscribe button below, turn on the post notification bell so that you can always be the first person to know whenever a new video drops. And that's guys. Let's go. Well, you, you list here in one of your articles uh, where you make re reference to these rating systems, the bottom 10 countries for doing business in the world, Chad, Haiti, Central African Republic, Congo, Democratic Republic, South Sudan, Libya, Yemen, Venezuela, there's a lovely example, Eritrea and Somalia. And so there are three exceptions in yeah. the African ecosystem. Yeah. Mauritius, Rwanda, Kenya, South Africa, Botswana, and Zambia. You pointed out in your pros prospectus, is it prospectus yeah, article? Yeah, prospectus article of uh, right, Arthur right. Institute. Mm -hmm. Right, that Mar Mauritius is a rising star, uh, and Rwanda is in some ways comparable to Georgia. So some of these countries have started to get this right. Yes. And so what's the consequence of that? And what does right mean? What they have understood, what these countries have understood is that economic freedom is at the center for prosperity building. Uh, Rwanda, for example, Paul Kagame, the president of Rwanda, is explicit about it. He said he wants to be the Lee Kuan Wu of, he wants to be the Singapore of Africa, and Lee Kuan Wu is his model. Now, the dirty mouths are gonna start shouting, oh yeah, see, authoritarian, blah, 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 whatever. Me, I wanna talk only about the, um, econ on the economic side, if you take Lee Kuan Wu and Singapore as your example, then it means that like him, you're gonna to have to be serious about economic freedom. And that's exactly what he did. That's what Singapore did. When Singapore figured that out, they went on to put in the right reforms to make their environment the most, some of the most business friendly environments in the world, one of the most free markets environment in the world, and you saw the magic of Singapore. Today, Singapore is richer than its ex-colonizer, Great Britain. So when I hear people telling me today, oh, Africa is poor because of colonization, I'm like, please, let's move on from that. Does it have maybe a tiny percentage in where we are today? Maybe, maybe, and I don't know. But I know it's not the cause, because if it were many countless countries have been colonized before, and by the way, colonizing one another is, is humanity's history. It just happened that maybe African, Africa has been one of the, the, the last you know, um, colonized region in the world. So in our psyche, it, it, it is there and it acts like nothing happened before to others. But uh, flash news, it's the history of the world. We've been capturing each other back and forth, all of that. So anyway, but the truth is, um, Singapore, richer than Great Britain today. And then Hong Kong happened. And then because Hong Kong happened, China even today happened. Because China's like, wait a minute, what, con what went on over there? And then China went on to do the exact same thing with its SEZs, the special economic zones, some of the most free market zones in the world. And then look at it happen in communist China, who, when it comes to economics, decided that we're going to do the free market, we're going to be capitalist, because that's the only way. We tried everything else. We killed hundreds of millions of people, and, and, we, have, and we have nothing to show for it. But now that we're tired of being disrespected members of society, because guess what? That's the other thing, too. You want to be respected in this world? You're going to have to be among the, more, the prosperous ones for other reasons. Would it be nice, G, that we respect people just because? Absolutely. But that's really not the world we live in. So when China got tired of being disrespected, they're like, maybe we've got to build also some prosperity here because then they're going to hear us. And today, China, being one of the, you know, being where it is at, even Hollywood, Hollywood, who tries to tell the world how to think, is being told by China what movies to make and how to tweak stories and history in order to be palatable for them. You see the power that comes with, with being prosperous. 
The consumer price index has reached yet another 40-year high, and the latest GDP numbers confirm that the United States is in a recession. Now is not the time to have all your money in the stock market or tied to the U.S. dollar. Protect your savings from a highly turbulent economy by diversifying at least some of your investment portfolio into gold and silver from Birch Gold Group. Text JORDAN to 989898 and Birch Gold will send you a free information kit on how to transition an IRA or eligible 401k into an IRA in precious metals. Birch Gold will even help you hold gold in a tax-sheltered account. For decades, investors have relied on gold and silver as a hedge against inflation. Now you can too. With an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau, countless five-star reviews, and thousands Thousands of satisfied customers secure your future with gold from Birch Gold now. Text Jordan to 989898 and get real help from Birch Gold today. Again, text Jordan to 989898 to claim your free no obligation information kit on how to protect your hard earned savings with gold. What would you recommend concretely to countries like Senegal to get the hell out of the way, let's say, of the people who would like you would try to would do everything they could to try to make it better? I mean, one of the things that happened with India is India established the Indian Institute of Technology, which is a deadly yeah. engineering school, and a huge number of its graduates went to Silicon Valley, as you well know. Yeah. And many of the successful Indian graduates of IIT started to dump money back into India and build a, a capitalist infrastructure there, or help build a capitalist infrastructure there. So this sort of thing can really take hold. If you were making recommendations to governments who wanted to get on board and stop being like Chad, Haiti, <laughs> Central African Republic, Congo, South Sudan, Libya, Yemen, and Venezuela, etc., what what concrete step, steps should they take right. from the bottom up to get the hell out of the way? Exactly. So two things we've been doing uh, because I'm an I'm a practitioner as that's my entrepreneurial journey. I'm an entrepreneur, so I practice what I preach, uh, but I also preach. I preach for free markets, and so when it comes to that, I'm I'm. One of the hats that I wear is as the um, director for the African Center for Prosperity of the Atlas Network, the largest organization in the world of um, free market think tanks around the world. And so what we do there is we work on um, reforms around the world to take down barriers of entry for local entrepreneurs. So that's one thing. But as we mm -hmm. all know, that's a great initiative to take, and we've been making some really um, good advances in, uh, in, in uh, many countries, especially in Ghana. We've been making a lot of progress with our partners there, Imani. But, um, piecemeal, but that is piecemeal legislation. It takes forever. It is hard as heck. And by the time you made a gain here, you made 20 losses over there, and it's an continuous problem, but until we get better, we got to continue at it. So that's one thing we've been doing, and so that's a, a hat I wear, working with free market think tanks to try to make it easier for en local entrepreneurs to, 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 to join in the party. Uh, additionally, I'm going bold, I'm going radical. For the past few years, uh, we've been advocating um, an idea for Africa that um, found some of its roots in, um, in Latin America. And again, I'm related to the people who are involved in this. My husband being one of the key figures in this movement, a movement called the Charter Cities. Paul Romer calls it like that. He's a Nobel laureate in economics. Um, others calls it, call it the free cities. I like to call it the startup cities. So the best way to think about it, Jordan, and it goes back to what you were talking about earlier when you said, when you use the word operating software, most of the poor, uh, developing, most of the low-income nations, so meaning back in the days, the way we used to call it, is poor nations, are, they have regulations for poverty. They're basically regulated for poverty, meaning the laws, the set of law, poverty. It only calls poverty. And so what some of these fo folks have thought about, looking at the Dubai example, Dubai just recently entered the top 10 of the uh, international financial centers of the world. And what Dubai did at some point is think about it and be like, on this bare, you know, sand, plot of sand that's technically worth nothing right now, as is, this 110 acres of land, sand everywhere, they're like, well, maybe Sharia law is not the best for business. Um, we got to think about better set of laws for business. We're talking about only about business, not family law, not anything else but business. And they decided there's got to be something better. And so they looked around, and that's actually when to take one of the terms you used earlier, they're starting to realize, hmm, common law is actually a better way for business, specifically British common law. 
So at that point, and I'm oversimplifying here because otherwise we can totally geek out on it. Remember, this is like one of my latest things that I've been involved in, um, but latest, it's been the past 10 years, and I'm going to share with you a win. Um, so Dubai is like, we have to adopt British, um, you know, common law, primarily British common law. We're going to hire retired mm -hmm. British common law judges to come and educate the law here, train our own people. And that, along with many other reforms, to also become a top center uh, when it comes to the, um, and, and, and the free market when it comes to the finances. Dubai... Yeah, well, that, British common law, that British common law system, so it's very, very interesting theologically and metaphysically. So it's predicated on the idea that people have... Every individual has all the rights that there are, except for those that are specifically regulated and limited by legal necessity. And then generally that, that realm of necessity has emerged only as a consequence of disputes between people. So you're free to do whatever you want unless you have a dispute with someone else. Then the dispute is adjudicated according essentially to constitutional and theological principles, and then a precedent is established then the whole body of law built up that body of precedence. Yes. Yeah, and it's bottom up, not it's, top down. It's eh? totally And bad. English common law is a gift from yeah. God, man. No, it's something else. Absolutely. And that's the key word there when you said bottom up. So common law is so much better for bottom up approaches. And we all know that markets work better in a bottom up approach. And also, when they have to educate the law and um, resolve a dispute, they're going to be much more respectful to the contract that was passed between the two parties than, say, civil law. Which would be right, mm -hmm. and so anyway, so from this standpoint here, you have Dubai who is now trying to put all of this together, and eventually they put a set of laws together that would now be conducive to being a top international financial center in the world. And voila, in less than a generation, in less than 25 years, Dubai completely unrecognizable. Hmm. Africa is not poor because of colonization. This woman is actually making a whole lot of sense. So we shouldn't blame our colonizers. We shouldn't blame them for our current situation. Whatever situation we are currently going through is as a result of our own actions. We actually caused it. We are responsible for ourselves. Colonization has... Colonization has ended since how many years ago? Like, come on. So even till now, we can't say we are poor because of our colonization or whatever, whatever. We need to, what I just, my own comment is this, like, we need to step up our game. We need to step up our game. We need to, you know, go out there, work hard, work smart. I'm kind of person that I don't like to blame anyone for whatever situation i find myself if you are not making it if you are not making so much money if you are not rich if you are not wealthy it's as a result, it's as a result of yourself you can't even blame your parents it's as, a, it's as a result of yourself so you need to work on yourself you know work on yourself there are so many job opportunities there are many people that will tell you oh there's no job out there there's no money out there but regardless some people are making so much money from legit jobs, legit jobs, right? They're making so much money. Not necessarily you have to do an office job, you know. Social media, social media is taking over and people are really making a whole lot of money from there. So it's time for you to step up your game, come out of your comfort zone. You want to make it in life, then you need to work hard, work smart. That is what I feel about this whole situation. What do you guys think about this video? Drop a comment down below. I totally enjoyed this. If you enjoyed this video as much as I did, give it a huge thumbs up and please share this video. And if you are new here, join Vera City. Hit the subscribe button below. Turn on the post notification bell so that you can always be the first person to know whenever a new video drops. Let me know what you think about this video. I will be in the comments. Love you. Bye.